I'm going to get some stuff ready here. Okay. Awesome. So, when we last left off, the group the group had um, found their way, of course, into the city of Vasselheim and over to several parts of the city, um, fallen in a little bit with a guild of monster hunters, um, decided to join, and upon getting back from your, the, the uh, first mission you were sent on, you were brought below the guild hall far below the ground into a huge subterranean chamber that seemed to have some type of temple in it, um, in a ziggurat, like a stepped pyramid kind of style. Um, and upon being led into the temple, you were introduced to a sphinx. And that's where we left off. So as you walk into the main chamber of this large temple underground, um, coming in, you notice several uh, several bits of rubble and things in the first parts of this cavern. But as you get closer to the temple, you see less rock, less pieces of things. Um, and you see uh, that parts of the temple look like they might have been freshly uh, rebuilt um, from place to place. And upon coming in and through the small passageway into the interior, you, you, you are introduced to the Sphinx um, up on a dais as Vanessa, you, you're the uh, guild leader, um, kind of steps up onto the steps nearby and turns to you. And the Sphinx says, Blessings in the name of Ayun. It is good to see you have completed this, this task so quickly. Uh, could you all please uh, hold out your left arm? Um, Tim, remind us, remind me again which arm has the tattoo on it. <laughs> that is your left arm. Oh. Okay. okay I um, do it. Well, um, yeah, I guess put it out, uh, but like tattoo side down. Okay. Is everybody putting going to put out their arm? I, I will. Uh, I have my arms out. Oh. Okay. What were you saying, Tom? Um, yeah, he feel, feels like he's maybe spoken for, so he doesn't know what this is all about. Um, and he okay. Doesn't wanna, he doesn't truck with those other religions. Okay. Seeing your hesitation, um, the Sphinx kind of turns to you, and it's a large creature with the, the face of a woman, these huge wings, like eagle's wings that rise above uh, and the body of a lion but the whole the whole being is maybe 15 feet tall sitting at the top of this dais and and as she looks at you and she says do not be alarmed uh, it is simply a mark of of the guild it is it, it has no power it's, um, Mm. Okay. I'm going to believe you here. Okay. As you all stick your arms out, some with the, the inside of the bicep down, um, you feel a slight tingling, which quickly becomes a burning. Um, but it almost just as quickly subsides. And kind of putting up your sleeve, you see a... Just a, a small brand that has been put on the outside of your arm, um, magically, it seems. Uh, at the same time this is happening, um, those of you with, well, the mark you were trying to hide, um, it seems you felt a burning at the same place at the same time, and that mark is now gone. Uh, whatever magical effect did this uh, seems to have removed your connection to Loth. Um, 
However, good? yes. However, Crom, could you make a Constitution saving throw? Uh oh. Twenty. Natural twenty. Twenty. All right. As this is happening, you feel this kind of sharp pain in the back of your head, and for just a moment, you feel like you're almost about to faint, and kind of darkness flashes before your eyes with the face that looks a face that looks like Riz's, um, your your invisible friend who actually you, ha you haven't seen in a little bit, um, except for it's contorted. And there are horns coming out both above and below uh, the, 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 the parts of the head. Uh, the eyes are totally sunken in now, just pits of blackness that seem to suck in all light and just smiling slightly. And you see that as a flash in blackness before your vision clears again and you look down to see the same mark has been put on you. The tattoo has been removed. Oh, okay. Uh... But, yeah, if you had rolled anything below a natural 20, you might, might not have. <laughs> um, okay. As this is done, uh, Vanessa, uh, your friend, the, the guild master who had, had led you in here, kind of smiles and says, well, welcome to the Slayer's Take. Uh, you are now one of us. And may I introduce it? Osissa, uh, not exactly our leader, but definitely um, an important member of the guild as she gestures over to the Sphinx next to her. Hello. Hi. The Sphinx nods to you. Um, looking, you see that it's, you can tell that she's basically looking at each one of you, but it's, it can be a little hard. The eyes are entirely glazed over white and glow slightly. Uh, there's no pupils. And um, she's wearing these ornate pieces of gold jewelry with gems set in them, uh, several pieces wrapped around her neck that uh, flow down, uh, some of them almost to the floor, um, very sparkly. Um, yes. And then she says, uh, the Sphinx Osissa looks at you and says, I have been watching all of you for some time now. Since uh, it came to our attention, you were looking for followers of Aun. You are looking for Aun, yes? Yes, 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 yes. This is good to hear. Yeah. There are many who search her out. It is uh, only those who truly are in need that often find her. But please, uh, I know some, but not all of why you might be looking. Uh, what service do you require of her followers? Um, I have this, uh, oh, well, somebody else could talk about that. Um, I, I'm going to talk about my thing first. Um, I have this, uh, sword, or, yeah, sword, uh, that makes me see this, uh, being, and it makes me feel weird and want to kill people sometimes. So, I was hoping I could get rid of that. Because it's, uh, it won't let me drop it and leave it. It kind of follows me. So. Okay. And they have a thing, too. All right. Um, as, as she kind of looks at you, her brow furrows a little bit. Um, all right. Let me see here. Yes. And she says, uh, this is interesting. Uh, what exactly is the nature of this being that you see? Uh, it is attached to your sword, you say. Uh, yeah, um, she like 
was a little goblin girl, but then she got bigger and meaner. Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, would you mind uh, holding up the sword? Sure. Okay. As you hold up the sword, you see her eyes kind of focus in on it. Um, they start to glow a little bit brighter, and a slight blue tint comes into them. Um, quickly, she kind of recoils and says, You have brought a, a tainted thing into this place. Uh, this is of the chained oblivion. Yeah, that, that's. Did I say that? I meant to say that. Yep. That is one of the greatest uh, enemies of our patron, yeah. Ayun. Um, in fact, she is still carries the wounds he gave during their last battle. Oh. Indeed, you 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 must somehow unchain this from you. Um, yeah. Well. There are places where Ayun's power is greater. This is one of them. However, the power in this place is more about seeing than it is about uh, cleansing. In this place, I can see many other areas, places, planes of existence. Uh, Ayun gives me the sight here, you might say, to cleanse you and your blade. Uh, the tears are probably where you want to go. It is not far, but... Uh, oh, that's good. I think we, we need to do that also. I mean... The, the tears of Ayun, you need to, you already know about them? Um, yeah, we, um, we needed to get to the tears of Ayun to uh, form the, uh, shackles of, um. Yep, shackles for the chain. chain. Well, yeah, I guess it's yeah. related to yeah, yeah. Calm's thing. Uh, it's all um, good. Yeah, we were, uh, we're we're on a mission to defeat the chained oblivion. I see. I mean, th this is uh, this would make sense then. Um, well, uh, in the mountains to the north of here, there is a small temple. One might say it's really only a stone rotunda, just six different columns holding up a stone roof and beneath that roof a pool of water uh, it is said to be the literal tears that Ayun shed uh, when her side was pierced uh, during the last battle of the calamity and it is also said that it has great cleansing and and healing powers now understand, uh, this knowledge is not given out to everyone, um, only those in great need, or of course, those in, in our guild, uh, as Ayun bestows many blessings upon us, um, know about this temple. It, uh, it is said also that part of the cleansing process is often learning something either about yourself or the nature of reality. Uh, and like all wisdom, it must be earned. This is not an easy thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. I could do it. I could do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. How, how, how high is your wisdom score? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, um, one. I have 12. It's 12. Well... Um, just remember going on, I, I see much, uh, but it is in my nature as, and she gestures to herself with this large paw, uh, as she does, the claws kind of come out of it a little bit. 
um, as it is in my nature to not necessarily give you all information. Uh. Um, there must be a test. Just, just uh, uh. know that wisdom will save you. Do not trust only in your strength, because oh. it fails in the end. And rage is fleeting, as well as draining. Yeah. But your knowledge will fill you up, and experience will lead you through to the end. Just remember that wisdom comes with experience, but oftentimes that experience can be painful. And as she says this, uh, once again, her eyes go from being glowing blue back to that slightly less glowing white. And she looks at the rest of you saying, um, is there anything else you are looking for while you are here? I mean, you are now part of the guild. We I'm try to take care of our members. <laughs> It uh, led into the what library? Oh, uh, the the uh, oh gosh, no, I'm not even remembering. The Kobolds Library. They were jerks. Yes. Elite elitist jerks. They said that the old man to let us in was not here, and they would not let us in. All right, let me see something. <laughs> you mean those uh, of the uh, the cobalt soul? Yes, that's what I said. The cobalts, the 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 cobalt soul. In in any case, uh, we can give you some type of. We can get you passage. It may not be through the front gate, but we can help. The vault is uh, full of much knowledge, and the, the monks, they are... Dicks. Well, they are, they are serious about their protection of that knowledge. It makes knowledge currency, which is no good. Well, in some ways it is. In any case, we can we can provide you a passage. Um, is there anything else? Yes, I seek knowledge of my family. Do you know if you can see everything? How are they? Um. Well, uh, who are they? I must, I must have a name and a place. Sorry. The House of Thorani. The House of Thorani. Okay. And she, she kind of turns and looks slightly to her side, and you notice a crystal globe um, in kind of the shape of a heart um, that is on a small pedestal nearby. And as she glances over to it, her eyes start to light up just as they had before, and the globe this time starts to also light up. And as she gazes into it for a few moments, uh, she almost seems to be mumbling to herself under her breath. And as she turns back to her eyes, the, the light leaving them, she, she says, they are well. Thank you. It is my pleasure. Well then, uh, it is good that you came. Good luck on your journey. And as she, she gets up on all fours, kind of stretches out a bit and, and turns around and kind of walks back into the shadows of the large room here that is only lit with a few torches and 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 things um in this front part of the, the the chamber as she does uh vanessa comes down the stairs and up to you and and says 
Well then, that was um, quite interesting. Sorry about the surprise. We, you, you, you can understand. We can't exactly tell people we have a sphinx. Why not? Well, everyone would be down here, um, you know, asking for the answers they need or for where the lost treasure is, things like that. And it gets, it would get old after a while. Um, right around this time, Chomp, you hear out of where you're not sure, it's almost as if it's in your head, um, a voice suddenly that says, I, um, are, is, is this the one who uh, bought the book earlier today? Um, this is, this is Marjolina, um. I did, the, the, an, an item came in. I think you might be interested in based on that. Um, so please find the find the shop if you can. Uh, hold on. I step away from the group. I, I got to take this call. <laughs> um, I I try to respond. Uh, I guess I say uh, hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Do not reply to this email. Uh, you. Uh, <laughs> You you wait a few seconds and then you hear back. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me tire out here. Um, just just find the shop. Of the oh, okay. It's a ma it's a magic thing. I got it. I got it. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. And then you don't hear anything else. Um, okay, L leading you back up the long winding stairs into the Slayers Take Guild Hall. Um, you find that the sun has gone down. Um, you're down in the uh, the bottom there longer than you thought you had been. Um, but, oh gosh, yes. Um, as Vanessa kind of turns you loose, she says, uh, just be aware, occasionally we may call on you for something. Um, it's not mandatory, but, uh, you know, we help you, you help us, and all that. So, I'll yeah, see you later. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I awesome. Cartwheel out. You cartwheel out. Yes, I'm excited. Okay. So, you have some, I mean, you were given some okay directions to how to get to the, uh, the Tears of Ayun. Um, the well in the, the mountains to the north. Um, but at the moment, um, it's just after sundown. The, uh, the town is bustling, and what would you like to do? I'm going to go read a book. All right, there's some... Your picture book? Yeah. Got to get that wisdom? Yeah. Isn't there a temple of maidens around somewhere? Oh, shit. <laughs> temple of maidens? Busty maidens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is going to go... Um, Local wenches in your area. <laughs> Local wenches in your area. Uh, yeah, there... Um, I don't know about maidens in general, but... Um, there is, you know, the uh, the Temple of the Raven Queen um, in the Dusk Meadow. Well, the elves we were walking in with mentioned something about them. Yes, that, that there's, there's, um, oh gosh, let me see here. I need to find that part of my notes. Well, it doesn't have to be a Temple of Maidens. It can be a pub of maidens. <laughs> Um, they they mentioned um, the the uh, maidens of the Raven Queen, um, which is the priesthood of the Raven Queen. Um, they are they are all they are all women. Like hmm. there there are other followers of the the Raven Queen who are who, who are male, but um, specifically all the priests of the uh, um, the Trust of Winter they call it. Um, 
uh, which is the followers of the Raven Queen here in Vasselheim are, are all female. Chomp, I have a question yes. for you. Didn't remember when we were fighting Master Shen? Weren't we fighting in the Raven Queens? You've got a better memory for that type of stuff than I do. Um. Yeah, when we were fighting Master Shen. Uh, yeah, I mean we've run into uh, Raven Queen uh, yeah. simples and. Follow I wonder if we should go check that out. Maidens be damned. I wonder if we should go check out and see if there's anything going on over there. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> we want to go meet that book lady. Yeah, I got places to be. Um, so you guys can check that out, but I gotta, I gotta find this book card. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so where's everybody? What does everybody want to do? I mean, Roland, do you want to go to the to the Dusk Meadow and and check out the followers of the Raven Queen? Yeah, I'll go there. Okay. Does anybody want to go with Roland? I liked the Dusk Meadow. It was kind of emo slash goth, depending on which part you're in. I remember it being very cold, so I will go not there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so Chomp um, and Crom, are you going to go to the, uh, the the bookshop? Yeah, I have to go to the book lady with him. All right, and Thirsis, what do you? What would you like to do? Sean, did I lose you? For some reason, I am not hearing you. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right, so, Sarah, this will go with Trump and Crump. Okay, um, so. You know? Yeah, I got you now. That was weird. It works though. Um, okay. Sorry, I gotta find something here. Uh, Zippel, uh, where would you like to go? It, I, not to the dust meadow, but um, I mean, if he's if whoever said they wanted to go there is going alone, I don't want that, so I'll go with them. But. Otherwise, I'll go to the book cart. You can go to the book cart. Let's split the party. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, what could happen? Oh, my. That's what happened. Sorry about that. Stuff just happened okay is everybody's ears okay yes okay so um all right zipple you're gonna go to the to, to the book seller then yeah again unless unless the dust meadow is going so low okay uh well actually uh yeah um Roland will be going solo if, if you do not go with him. I'll go with him then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, first off, um, let's go to... 
yeah, let's go to the books because the fantastic card is fun. All right, so uh, first off, Chomp, could you make a investigation check searching for where the fantastic card is now? It's been a little bit since you were there. A few days, in fact. What did you say? What check? Investigation? Investigation, yeah. Uh, 20. 20, all right. Um, kind of backtracking to where you had last seen and then asking a few people, um, you find that it's only another wall section over in the Quad Roads district. Um, you find the familiar uh, kind of slowly rocking and moving a large cart almost like a house on a cart being pulled by the, the, the uh, musk ox. And stepping up into it, you find the inside, once again, lit by lanterns and a few candles. And it's, it's very cozy. It's a, it's a nice little place. Um, and you very quickly see uh, Marjolina, um, the human woman who runs the shop. And as she sees you come in, she adjusts her glasses and says, Ah, oh, yes, you're here. Um, Good to see you. Uh, please, y'all come over. <laughs> um, sorry, my accent's going in and out here. Um, but please, uh, come over here. Um, I, I have something to show you. And she gestures to a large shape that seems to be on the, the, the usual, usually piled table that she has, but it just seems to be cleared off and there's this large something on the table covered in a, in a blanket. Um, and she kind of gestures for you all to gather around, um, the, the three of you. Um, and she says, now, you're going to have to hold your applause, but um, I'm going to have to explain where I got this. And, it, well, I'm not even sure how I ended up with it. But, well, in any case, I thought you might be interested in, in possibly purchasing it. Uh, as as you you said, you were interested in all types of arcane and odd artifacts. Um, in any case, and she whips off the the kind of sheet that's over it, and you see probably an eight foot tall. What would have been eight foot, foot tall um, looks like it might be a very detailed automaton, or possibly a unpowered warforged. <coughs> In any case, um, a, a, a made of metal and stone and with these cunning joints that are like made of, of rounded plates that look like they can all move in different directions. And um, but like I said, currently it, it, it is not moving. Um, there is no hum. It, uh, to the touch, it is, it is cold. Um, but she, she, and Marjolina says, uh, yes, uh, you, you, you see... We had uh, some people coming through, and they, they, they wanted some... Well, it doesn't matter what they wanted. That's their, their privileged information. But as part of the trade, they had this on their cart. And I thought, well, I might be able to get some money out of this. And you were the first one I thought of uh, when you came in a couple of days ago. And after that, you bought that book on artificing. This seemed like the kind of thing you might be interested in. So, please, tell me. Would you be interested? Um... This looks like very fine craftsmanship. Uh, um, let's see. Oh my God, he'll take it. <laughs> I mean, it is a good, like this thing must weigh, with the metal, eight, being eight feet t foot tall and with the metal and stone it's made of, it's it weighs six, 700 pounds. Oh, you uh, could totally throw it over your shoulder. Yeah, or uh, does, it, does it come with the trailer? Oh, uh, um, unfortunately. Uh, it took a few men to carry it in here. This is a sturdy table, but you'll have to you'll have to uh, take it out. Yeah, um, I would be interested in this. Yes, uh, we may need a few minutes to make arrangements for transportation. All right then. Um, currency, though, uh, what could you give me for it? Uh. Well, how about... 
I mean, I take all forms of trade, uh, barter, cash, of course, um, and services rendered, if, if there's anything you're good at. Um, well, I do have... Uh, I'm uh, skilled in uh, repairing various mechanical items. Um, well, yes, that's why I, I, I figured that's why I had called you, but it's got to be worth it to me. Right. So um, I also have, a, I think we have a, we have a musket or two. We have monies. Uh, th that, those are uh, unusual items. I imagine, and and in addition to some money, I don't know how much you traded this for, but well, it was a good amount. I, I they cleaned me out of my collection, my quite extensive collection on talking mushrooms. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> she at this point gestures over to a bare shelf. Um, it looks like it probably had about twelve to fifteen books on it at some point that is now just empty and hasn't been refilled yet. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, I've, I, I've got no reference concept <laughs> on, on uh, currency here. So like, well, let, well, let, 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 let me start then. Um, let's say the worth of 500 gold lot well i mean she 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 kind of waves yeah. her hand over the the figure on the table uh, you're not going to come across one of these every day seriously that's true he's playing hard to get um do you, does does crom say that yes <laughs> well i can see i can see that yes well how about how oh. about uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, three hundred gold and this uh, firearm, this uh, Exandria musket? A musket. Mm hmm. Well, we don't get many. We don't get many firearms in here. Um, most of them are. Uh, you see, most of them in Taldori. Although I've heard there's been some in Wildmount. Um, however, the. Uh, the powers that be here in Vasselheim have not taken yet to the uh, to that technology. Uh, they they seem to be a little old school, as as you see. Um, I think that might be all right. You said three hundred gold and and the firearm. Yeah. She kind of looks like she starts looking up, kind of at the ceiling, and her fingers start kind of looks like she's calculating things and. She looks at the musket, looks down at the 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 uh, the form on the table, and says, "How well, about three fifty and and the gun?" Deal. All right. Um, and she, as she she puts out her hand uh, for the gold and the gun, the, another hand for the gun, um, and she says, "It's it's here for you to take." Um, you, the three of you might be able to handle it, uh, especially the big one there. Yeah. Um, and then she, she immediately, somebody else has walked in in the meantime as she was haggling with you, and she immediately says, excuse me, and she walks over to them and starts uh, trying to sell them something. But. All right, so... Uh... I mean, we get it off the cart. Where are we? Where are we going to take this thing? All right, don't, don't we have a place to stay? Do we have a place? We need to, like rent garage space or something. Uh, um, we put it in a hut. How well did you look it over? Maybe there's like an on switch. Yeah, I, I figure I might I might need some time to study it. Uh, or something before I can make sense of uh, how to make it work. Okay, I I will. Um, can I do investigation and see if there's like um, an inn nearby? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, just roll a quick, quick investigation check. To see. Yeah, because I think we stayed at a temple or something the first night. You did, yes. Uh, a one. A one. Okay. I don't see one. You uh, on this street right now? I mean, it's gotten dark out. There's there's people rushing by. It's a fairly busy night, um, even in the winter midst of the winter here. Um, there doesn't seem to be any close to you at the moment. It might take a little longer to find one. All right, let me see here. Um, so what would y'all like to do? I guess. Uh... We can pick this thing up and get it off the cart. Okay. Um, Krom, what is your strength score? Oh, it's um, 17. All right. What is that times 15? Um, <laughs> so go, to your, no, go to your equipment. Oops. Oh, wait. Yeah. Hold on. There's a thing. It's 255, but... um. Hold on, there's a... I've, I forgot where I saw okay. it. Okay, I can push, drag, or lift 1,020 pounds. All right. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> this large... Like, it's as tall as you are. Um, it's, it's slightly wider, maybe. Um, but it's it's just made of... It looks like brass and steel and, in some parts stone and some parts even gems um it it looks heavy in fact chomp pushing on it you can't even get it to budge um uh, but crom kind of looking at it for a sec and then thinking okay and you kind of grab onto both sides of its shoulders and you throw it into kind of a fireman's carry over your shoulder yeah and just with one arm over it the other kind of stabilizing it and like you can't, you, you probably couldn't run like this, but you're able to, as you kind of step down off of the stairs of the cart, the whole cart lifts up about an inch. Um, and yeah, you're, you're able to. Okay, cool. Just, uh, y'all make sure I don't hit anybody with this thing. Just make a way. Yeah, we'll be going pretty slow. Okay. Okay. Um, so y'all are going to look for a so, somewhere to hole up for the night, or what would you like to do? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the other two of you, Roland and Zippo, on the in the meantime, you, you are heading to the Dusk Meadow. Yes. 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 Okay. So making your way through the city uh, to the west um, and kind of following the curve a bit. Um, it's easy enough. You've been through the Dusk Meadow uh, and you even passed by one of the main kind of areas of the Dusk Meadow, the catacombs, where there's just, it's, it's a huge graveyard area. Um, just as in the abundant terrace, there was a huge swaths of living and growing things being cultivated. Here on the opposite side of the city, um, this is where the dead are taken care of and interred and honored. Um, it's 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 interesting. It's kind of a a circle of life here, and you're on the other side of it now. Um, but as coming into the dusk meadow, especially at night, it is quiet here. Um, there is not much going on. Uh, and yes, uh, who exactly or what exactly would you like to look for? A pub. A pub in the Dusk Meadow. Okay. Um, roll an investigation check. Roll in. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So... Um, oh gosh, what was that looking for? Yep. So 14, uh, looking around, especially in this, this early part, this is not the type of place where you're going to find a pub, a pub just, just 
even on, on first glance, um, you do take some time to look around. The closest thing you find is a small tea house, um, which seems to be open. Ziplo, besides eating cobalts, which I think is a marvelous pastime, what do you like to do? Would you like a drink or tea or what? I don't really... I don't know that I've ever had a drink. I mean, I've had, you know, the water and the cold water. Um, pleased to be <laughs> telling me what tea is. Tea is a weak drink. It's good for warming you up. And you do get cold. I, I but like it's... It does not warm you up as well as ale. I would like to be warm. I would try this ale. How All right, let's look for... What's happening? We will be looking for the ale. For the ale. Okay. Um, well, like I said, you would, you would manage to find the... Uh, a tea house. Um, and yes, so uh, th that that is you. You might be able to find some type of alcohol in there if you'd like to try. Well, see, see, should we go in and see if they have anything? Let us perhaps go they'll have something you their like. Their warmest drinks. Their warmest drinks. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, walking in, you see a fairly somber looking place. Um, dark wood accents everywhere. The, the tables and chairs are dark wood. And there's a nice little counter set up. Um, there's several patrons in here this time of night, actually, um, strangely. Uh, mostly darkly dressed. The blessings of the sun god upon all here. Like every eye in the room turns to you. And then goes back to what they were doing. No one says hello. Is anybody gambling? You don't see anybody gambling there uh, at first glance anyway. Um, there's at least one group of three people over to one side of the room that seem to be closely gathered over something that they're looking at on it, on the table. Can I sort of peer over in that direction and see what it is? Yeah, make a perception check. Oh, natural one. Okay. It's, it's dark. It's kind of badly lit in here, um, kind of as, as kind of mood lighting. So you can't really see from here. Roland, what are you trying to look uh. at? You're squinting. <laughs> Like, even for your elven oh, eyes, yeah. it's, it's tough to see. Sabia, so, yeah, why don't we just order some warm drinks and see what happens? Yes, let us, let us get, and then we shall talk. Yes. The warm drinks, and then we shall talk. All right. That sounds good. Making your way up to the counter, um, you see a maybe 30 something human there um dark hair brought back into a ponytail uh and she uh as as you walk up says yeah uh what 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 can i get you the warmest drinks well i mean we have tea that's that's warm um anything in particular my friend said the ale makes you warm i like that the ale. Um, I don't know that we have. She kind of looks around behind the counter and looks under it um, real quick uh, before saying, I don't know if we have any ale. Um, we do have some whiskey. Uh, we, we make hot toddies uh, with, with tea, a little bit of lemon, and then a, a shot in it. It's quite good. I don't... That sounds wonderful. Well, we'll have two. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, uh Four silver. All right, I'll I'll buy it. 
Right. And as, I'll and buy ZPS too. Getting the silver, she immediately goes to work. There's several pots of hot water there. She starts steeping um, with a little infuser. And before long, you have this steaming mug put in front of you um, that smells, it's very fragrant, kind of herbal smelling um, with just this little bit of hint of whiskey in it uh, and honey and lemon. And it's, it's quite nice. Do you have any crickets? I mean, it's it's winter, so I haven't... Uh, why? Are you an exterminator? I would like to eat. Oh. oh. No, 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 nothing. Nothing As right now. Pack to eat. We, we have popped corn. No. Oh, oh, all right. Roland, let Could us you send... Up. Roland, what? I'm sorry, what? Let us talk. Let us talk, yes. What would you like to talk about? How did you get mixed up in this crazy place with these peoples? The one tries to kill us, hurted me, several others. We are now in the frozen lands. I know how I got here. I was tricked. But you were not you tricked. Mean? You're a necessary part of our group now. How did you come in to know these people? A burning barn? We were thrown together a few months ago by fate. And since we've gotten together, we've had many adventures. In fact, you should be proud to be part of our group. We're off to save the world. We've saved Taldore. We've We've done amazing things. You should not feel tricked to be with us. You should be honored. Why does the world need saving if the sun is there? He, the sun will take care of us. The um, chain oblivion wants to take the sun away. Yeah, but he's not going to because the sun is very warm. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to take the sun away. He wants the earth to be cold and dark. I don't really care for that but I don't think he can do it. <laughs> he can if if he breaks loose he can do it. Well he just we need to make sure he doesn't break loose. That's the end. That's why you're with us. May I ask because, another question? Yes. On the ship one of the crewmen was talking about a hippopotamus? Uh-huh. What, what is a hippopotamus? Hmm. It's a big, ugly, a big, cute animal that will kill you. Is it delicious? If you can hunt it down and eat it, yes. However, I would stick with the cobalts. They're nasty little critters and they need to be eaten. I would love to try a cobalt. I would love for you to try one. Let's go look for the cobalts. Let's go look for the cobalts, a game of dice, and some women, and some ale. Uh, Do you no. like the hot toddy? We, is it making you warm? It is making me feel very warm. <laughs> I, don't want to eat, I don't want to eat dice. I only want to eat the cobalt. Well, <laughs> we can play a dice game and see if we can't win you a cobalt. Okay. We just have to find somebody to play with. Well, we could just add. Does anybody want to play the dice? Thank you. Any yeah. responses? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> could one of you make a uh, persuasion check? I have pretty good persuasion. Um, yeah, 25. Okay. Um, the uh, actually the the group of three that you had been kind of um, looking at uh, and trying to see what they were doing, they all kind of look up as you as it, as, as Zippel says this, and uh, they look at each other and shrug and say, "Yeah, uh, we'll play." 
We're playing for cow bones. They look at each other once again and look at back at you kind of worried. We're playing for gold. To buy cobalts. Yes. I, to buy my hungry friend a cobalt. Well, well, please, uh, sit down. Uh, we're gonna... Do you have dice? Um, I think I do. Yes, I do. All right. Um, well, then... Uh, Here, so just let me see. Okay, let's see. Have you ever played? Well, let's just, I mean, we can just roll, I suppose. Um, he, he takes out two dice in his hand, um, kind of rolling them uh, one off of the other and says... Um, have you ever played uh, just basic street street dice? No. Of course. Of course. All right. Um, well, you want to shoot first, then. All right. Tim, how many, how, how many dice do I roll? One or um, two? You got two d sixes. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 roll them. Um, and but before you roll them, he says, "Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, let's, let's. I mean, in my understanding of these rolls, um, you, you you have to. Well, let's just make sure that we're on the same page. Um, you and me are going to roll against each other. Uh huh. All right. Um, the higher the the the, the higher number it wins. I'll Except. wager one gold. All right." Um, and snake eyes means you have to pay me double. All right. I got a seven. Seven altogether? Uh-huh. Okay. And as he kind of looks at you, he has his own dice and he rolls. Ah! Tarnation. Six, and as you look up, you, you look down, you see six pips looking up at you. And he says, oh. here's your gold. Uh, what would your friend like to roll? Sure. Go if ahead. If I look. win, you have to take a pamphlet. A, a, a pamphlet? Yes, it is a piece of paper folded up. Um which I have written on many words. It's a very good learning on this on God. Um, um, all right. Uh, you roll first. And the money. I want that too. I mean, I got to get something more back in that case. If I win, what am I going to get? A pamphlet. I see. Is it one dice or two? Two, two D6s. And as he rolls, it rolls once again a five and a one. And, and he says, ah, just take it. And he gives you a gold. Of course I will. I won. And as, as, as that happens, uh, he's, he actually starts to get up from the table. No, no, no. You have to take the pamphlet. All, all right. And he, he, he takes the pamphlet, pamphlet. What is on this pamphlet? It's just um, things that Zepil has in his own, like, trying to come to terms with what organized religion is and, like, you know, the sun's warmth is God smiling at you and just, like, stuff like that. Nothing really helpful. <laughs> okay. Good to know. And it's in your handwriting, I'm guessing. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. it's well done, you know, and there's probably, like, some calligraphy and, like, illumination, but, like, he, he tried his best, but he's self-taught. Okay. All right. Um, and as he takes the pamphlet. Yeah. And he takes the pamphlet, he, he nods at you, and he kind of gestures with his, his head to the side, and his friends 
um, kind of get up with him and leave the table and, and leave the shop. We have one. We have one. I like your pamphlet style. Now we only need to find these uh, women so you can breed. And we can have met everything you wanted to do tonight. I don't want to breed. I don't really like children. I just want to find the women and have fun. You want to try Have you ever been... Breed? What? You want to practice the breeding, but not... Right. Wouldn't you like to practice the breeding, too, if we can find you a nice hot... Whatever turns you on? I have not seen a single lizard person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one up here. Well, you know, you don't have to stick with lizards. I mean, she Let's has a focus. <laughs> Let us focus on you for now. Oh, right. Um, around this time, a, a few more other people come into the shop. Um, you see two uh, women come in dressed in black with v black veils over their faces. Look, there you go. They do look like something. I wonder what their veils are hiding. Do not pull it off. Do not. No, you should not go pull it off. Let's see if they want a drink. Would you like another drink? It's on yes, me. I would. Okay, so we'll each get a drink. Okay. And then Roland will walk over to one of the women in the veils and say, Good evening. May I buy y'all a drink? Okay. Um, the, w the one closest to you looks kind of looks over at you, just kind of slightly shifting her head looking at you out of the corner of her eye and says, I think, no. Too bad you don't know what you're missing. Indeed. And she goes back to talking to the her, her companion. Okay, so Roland's just going to skulk back over to ZPO, thoroughly annoyed. How Maybe we ought go? to go find the others. It did not go well. They're stuck up. They didn't know what they were missing when they could have had drinks with the both of us. Yes. Maybe they want to play the dice. They're not very nice. Would you I think like we should pamphlet? probably head back. What? Okay. I was going to ask them if they wanted the pamphlet, but we will just go. Go give them a pamphlet. I think they need a pamphlet. I walk over and I bow pretty formally and I just put a pamphlet in front of them on the bar top and I go back to Roland. Okay. And we'll head back. Much as I like the emo vibe and I probably want a winter house here, we'll head back towards the tavern. I mean, back. I'll get out my ring of communication and ask them where they are. All right. In the meantime, because we hadn't found where they are yet. Um, okay. So, uh, Chomp, Sirthus, and Krom, um, you were going to try to find someone where to stay for the night. Well, where would you like to try to find a place to stay? Um... I guess we'll uh, look around the uh, I don't know I think we're one wall over from the busier section of town but I don't know does it look like there's a place to stay nearby I don't want to have to carry this thing or I don't want Krom to have to carry this thing for too long I mean uh, upon first looking you hadn't seen anything real nearby um, you, you'll probably, it looks from the looks of it, you'll probably have to go at least over w another wall section back towards, um, the entrance. Okay. Let's head that way. All right. Oh, um, right. yes. Could, we could just drag it into an alley and then, uh, oh. I don't know, do a Lehman's on top of it. 
keep anybody from messing with it. Um, but really need to get this thing working. We just need to get the hotel in. Can you? Yeah, and no, I don't. Right. Uh, we don't know how long it will take to figure it out, but. All right. Um, okay, so um, make an intelligence check for me real quick. Um, just straight intelligence yeah. it is a 14. Okay. It occurs to you as you're kind of Standing in the midst of this cold street in the middle of this winter night, um, people passing you on either side and, and going in different directions, kind of the bustle. Um, it, it was kind of disorienting at first, and then you realize, oh, we could probably stay at uh, the Slayer's Take. Oh, yay. Oh, yeah. Which is not far. Um, it is just one set wall section over. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, why don't we uh, go ask our new friends, the uh, the Slayers? Slayers. All right. Uh, so making your way into the first part of the Quad Roads District, you coming back inside the Slayers take, you, you see, um, upon coming in, the same halfling that you had been introduced to earlier. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, Merton, um, Vanessa's husband. Um, he has this kind of red hair with some gray in it, his scars on his face, and he's the only one in the common room right now. Um, but as you come in, he looks up and says, Oh, you lot again. Um, good to see you. Uh, what can, uh, do you need some help with that thing? Oh my. Um, yeah, well, we need, uh, if we can find a place to uh, set this down, um well i mean it's, would you like to set it down in here or as as members your your allowed quarters for the night of course um we have a few we have several rooms open at the moment yes uh a room would be ideal all right well just follow me and he as he, he kind of leads you upstairs into a good sized suite with two bedrooms on it um in a common room in the middle, like a smaller common room in the middle of it, um, kind of like a, a visiting room, um, and says, this is yours for the night. Gives you a key, and he goes back downstairs. All right. Somewhere well, around. You can uh, set that on the floor over there. Yeah. As you do it, just go, it, it thuds on the floor, and the whole room kind of, like some little bit of china in the cabinets and things kind of clinks. Um, it's pretty heavy. Uh, at Brown this time, you, you threw the ring on your hand. Um, the two of you, anyway, hear, hear Rowan uh, speaking, um, asking where you're at. We went back to the Slayers. Slayers. Take. All right, we'll meet you there. All right. Um, as... In the meantime, uh, did you want to take a look at your your new treasure? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I figure I will uh, investigate it. Maybe uh, flip through the artificer's book to see if there's any relevant chapters on mechanical men. Okay. And All right. I'll just like you know, uh, look at the. At the item. Yep. Okay, let's see here then. I'm gonna have you. Um. Yes. I don't know nearly as much about this stuff as him, but I'm definitely, you know, interested. Yeah. Following what he's doing and all that stuff. Okay. So, um, taking a look at this. Let me see. Um. Make 
And anybody, anybody taking a look at this can make this roll um, as, as you're waiting for Zippel and Roland to come back. Um, I want you to make an... Hmm. Let me see. This one's tough. Because not... I mean, it's kind of arcana... But I'm going to say make, yeah, make an arcana check. And any, anybody that's looking at it can, can make it just to see what you, you kind of learn about it. Um, 19 modified. Okay. I got a 24. 24, all right. Um, okay, so kind of delving into the the book you had bought as well as kind of opening up some panels that you find on on this this thing, uh, looking at, around, kind of looking at the intricacies, especially like you you get a good look at the forearm and like the, these kind of metal tendons going down and you kind of pull on one and like the finger moves and you pull on another and the, the wrist kind of rotates and it's like, oh, and you start making notes. Um, you get the sense that this is, from what you can understand from your reading as well as some previous reading, this is not a uh, this is not a warforged um, one of those kind of remnants of the Age of Arcana that many are have been around for hundreds of years and are still powered. Um, this is something slightly newer, uh, but made by definitely a fairly skilled artificer um it's probably you gather some type of servant uh, automaton uh and is fairly um intricate and even even decorative in places um like you can uh, along the plates that kind of make up many parts of the the body you you find um sigils and things that have been inscribed in a decorative manner, but also they're functional um, from an arcanist sense. Like they, they actually help hold the thing together and, and when there's actual power flowing through this, they, they, they do different things. Uh, it's, it, there, there's several little like compartments and tools that are on it. Uh, and it looks like it even might've been a shop helper for whoever originally built it um for instance several of the fingers when um have bits that can pop off and underneath is you know a phillips head screwdriver or you know or, or a, a ratchet set you know with an expanding and and contracting uh ratchet head and things like that it's it's very ingenious um however in the center of the chest where much like Iron Man, um, there had been something powering it. Uh, there's an empty space. And you're not even quite sure what would have been powering it. There's several options of what it could have been from your reading. Uh, well, guys, I think I figured out the problem. Uh, we're probably going to need the souls of the innocent to power this thing, and that's just the way it is. It's it's around this time that Zippel and and Roland walk back into the room. It's better than dragging it around all over the place. What is that? Yeah, it's probably you got a war forged. Oh, how awesome! Well, I I think it's similar to a war forged. Yeah, I got it from the bookstore. Dang, does it kill things? Uh, not sure yet. This is you're you're pretty much looking at what it does right now. Um, I gotta find something that'll fit in that hole. You see that hole there in the center? Uh, we gotta put something in there, and then we can figure out what this thing can do. Hmm. Would one of those crystals work? Uh, do we have any? I don't know. I think we already brought them back. 
you had just... you had brought those back to to uh, Usu, and kind of left. I th- I think you left them with him. I'm not sure actually. I think I think that was the plan. I don't know if you actually did. What's what's still in the bag of holding? Um, it does not say. Okay, in that case, they've probably been left behind them. Ah, oh, right. So I should have kept one. You are aware, yeah, you are aware that there are several things that could power this. Even something as simple as a very hot coal, um, even, you know, heat energy could power this for a short time. Um, Not long, uh, because as it lost its heat, it would depower. But it's, uh, yes, it, it just needs energy of some type. Ah. Um, but yes, uh, other than that, as it's fairly late now, uh, and you spent part of today walking and another part meeting a, um, prescient sphinx, apparently, um, and then the other hauling around a, a, a 800 pound, uh, dummy, um, you, you are getting tired. Um, would you all like to take your long rest for tonight? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be good. All right. So taking the long rest, you... The sleep here in Vasselheim, those of you who do sleep a lot, I know, Roland, you just kind of meditate, and Sirthus hasn't slept in months. <laughs> um, but in a good way kind of um it's it's a fairly you know it's it's a city uh and and there are things going on all night long although it quiets down a bit after after midnight um you get a good amount of sleep um and restful sleep uh zippo you even have some pleasant dreams of a form very similar to uh what was described to you as as um um, Pelor, uh, but instead of a human body, a, a lizard body, but uh, and and a head of that just was the sun, um, and it's very comforting to know that he's there for you. Uh, you also get a couple quick glimpses of um, an island. Not something you've seen before, but just quick glimpses of a mountainous island with two huge stone rings. Um, one that you can see through the other. What uh, kind of trees? Are there trees? Yeah, it's it's quick. There are trees, but it's it's from a distance, and so you can't quite tell. I can't tell if they're deciduous, evergreen, palm. No. No, I mean it's it's from quite a distance. Uh, in fact, you get you get from the sense of scale, you get th- that these rings are huge. But that's all. In the morning, waking up to the sounds of the the, the few people opening their shops and and some people starting to to move around during the day, the sun coming up. Um, what would you like to do today? Um, I would like to try to sketch out the island that I saw, if I can, and ask people if this rings any bells. Okay, uh, make a quick performance check, although I, you you can do all kinds of crafting and stuff, huh? Yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Let me look at the features and traits. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so, so don't worry about a performance check for this, I'm going to say. You're able to sketch it out fairly well, just with a little bit of charcoal and on a, on a, on a piece of paper, which you always have a little bit on you. Um, the rest of you see him sketch this out, and he shows it to you, asking if you've ever seen it, and you see this 
mountainous island with uh, in perspective it looks like there's like the two giant rings that are being held up by the mountains and kind of on either side of them um which i'll have to draw out at some point uh <laughs> would anybody like to make a history check to see if they recognize the structure Yeah, I got I got lots of histories. Go for it. Anybody else? You said it's not a place that I've seen, so it's not a simple. Is it not a place that you remember? It doesn't make sense for me to do a history check. Yeah, take a crack at it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and roll a history check. I'll do one too. All right. Eleven. Eleven. Chump. Um. 23. 23. Okay. Rowan? I'm not well traveled. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So Rowan and Sirthus, uh, looking at it, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly good drawing and you, you know, it's, you know, Zippel knows how to, to art. Um, but it doesn't ring any bells, even, even in the things you've read or, or heard t speak of. Um, Chomp, you said you had a 23? Yes. Okay. So, uh, looking at it, it, it rings a bell just it, in passing something that you had, like, it was a scrawled in, like, description in the, in the uh, border of a book um, in, in the, that you had read uh, about a sea voyage um, somewhere off the western coast of Taldore. Um, and it was only seen from a distance, but it's the stone ring that, that, uh, that, that jogged the memory. Um, you're not exactly sure where it was, just somewhere on an island off the coast, the west coast of Taldore. Should we ask the Sphinx? I mean, you could. But let's ask the Sphinx. What would the rest of you like to do? I would like to uh, do what we need to do to like pack up and head towards the mountains. To look for the temple to go to the tears. Okay. Anyone else have anything else they want to do in Vasselheim in the meantime? I agree with Crum. All right. What about what? Let's do the big guy. Oh, I don't know what you're gonna do with that dude. I guess I got to try to come up with a fuel source for him. I mean, you you could leave him at the Slayer's Take if you'd like, probably. It'll be, it'll be yeah, I, I imagine uh, they probably have a good, safe place to store him. Yeah. You said um, heat might work? Yeah, do you, does ZPL have like a, a heat rock or something? I have many spells. Uh, oh, yeah. Eternal Flame or <laughs> uh, something. Does anybody have a spell that can buff my wisdom? Here is a pamphlet. Read it many times. Uh, okay. Yeah, could I just try to do Sacred Flame and see if that produces like enough kinetic energy to do something for him? Um, yeah, you can do that. You're going to pass Sacred Flame inside the, uh, the, the chest there? Yeah. Okay. So Zippo, looking at this laid out on the floor automaton, um, brings his hands together and concentrates for a second and then releases, uh, and, and you see this kind of swirling disc of, of light travel out towards the chest. And as it does, uh, roll damage. 
Wait, roll damage? Yeah, roll your radiant damage. All right. I mean, the damage is just energy. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's a dexterity saving throw, which I don't think he's going to be making. No. Not very quick, this one. Whoop. Uh, three. Three. Okay. Yep. Um, as it hits, you see the the kind of metal bits, and there's a, a couple small gems pointing out off of the end of kind of lines that seem to go in. The flame kind of shrinks suddenly as it goes in, and you can see several of them kind of light up a little bit as the energy passing from the sacred flame passes down these kind of arteries uh, for energy in, in, in this thing, and it actually shudders a little bit and sits up. It looks over at the, all of you kind of standing there, and it starts to raise a hand when then it just falls backwards again. Oh. It's alive! So all I have to do is hit it all the time with the sacred flame. <laughs> But you see, there is a lesson here. We all saw that it was granted life, however briefly, through the sun god's power. It is something for you to remember. I have some templates here. It's probably going to imprint on you now since you uh, gave it life. It is the way of the world. It's true. It will. All right. So... Oh, well, that was a very uh, informative experiment. I'm intrigued. Would you like me to try again right away? Uh, I think we can uh, uh, forego that at the moment. Um, we need something that will... I don't know. Give a give a steady flow of that kind of power for longer periods. Yeah. True. Yeah, like some. I don't know. A little bit of uranium or something. You I know, mean, I didn't see yellow cake uranium down at the General Goods store. Oh yeah. Yeah, I hadn't come across any, but. Something like that would be perfect. To be fair, you oh. had not asked. Yeah, just have to find plans for a nuclear reactor. But. We have to find the fantasy French because they'll sell to anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gosh. Um, okay. All right. Um, so we got that figured out. Um, anything else anybody would like to do? Or are we packing up and trying to find our way to the tiers? Yeah, to the tears. Again, right. since it's just right downstairs, if I could just run down and ask the all-knowing entity about the weird dream. Like, five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you find, coming downstairs, that you, the door, the secret door that you saw opened, and this, you, you, you can't access it immediately. You, know, you end up having to seek out Vanessa who asks, um, well, why... We don't often go down there. What is it exactly you need to know from her? I believe it has something to do with the chained oblivion. Oh. Um, it, would, it would help us in our calls and in the service of the sun god. Okay, well, let's... Uh, I, I, that's... That's a noble cause for sure. Um, Pelor did save Ayun in that last battle, so uh, we owe him, as 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 we say. Uh, follow me, and she opens. She puts her hand up to the wall, and the the door swings open, and uh, you find yourself descending once again under the ground, um, into the temple. Um, and up to the bottom of the dice again. Um, you don't immediately see Osissa here. Uh, 
And in fact, um, Vanessa calls out and says, Oh, oh Sisa, are, are you here? Uh, and um, you hear some shifting amongst the uh, shadows in, the, in, in this large chamber and into the light eventually steps the same sphinx. Um, she comes forward on to, to the edge of the stairs and sits once again and says, Yes, uh, what will you know? Hello, worthy one. I don't mean to bother you. Um, last night I had something that I believe to be a, a vision, um, something maybe I, we need to seek out. I believe it to be sent from the great sun. Um, I would like to hold up the drawing that I made in that. What, where, what is this place? She bends forward a little bit, looking at your drawing, and looks, kind of cocks her head to the side, and says, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> uh, she glances over at the, the crystal ball that she has, um, which lights up almost immediately, her eyes lighting up once again, and as she stares into it, and continues to stare into it, and continues to stare into it. And you see her brow start to furrow more and more as she's frowning. And eventually the light passes out of her eyes and she turns back to you, still frowning, and says, I, I, I don't know. There are very few places that I cannot see into. I've even glimpsed into the abyss before, um, although I won't be doing that again. Um, and I, I, I cannot find this. Um, are you sure it is an actual place? I, one of the other thought they had heard tales of it. Well, in the Taldori Sea, but not nothing that I could use to get to it. Hmm. I'm sorry to bother you. It is. It's. It's fine. I'm. I'm always interested to find new things. Uh, it is obvious that if this is a place, uh, something powerful is hiding it. In any case, I'm. I'm sorry that I could not help. No, you have been a great help. I have a pamphlet here that maybe you would be. And she turns to... around and starts walking back into the the shadows. I'll just leave it here then. Okay. All right. Being led by Vanessa once again upstairs, um, finding the other four waiting for you. Um, you have collected your belongings. Um, you quickly find out that there, there is somewhere to store your, your automaton um, as a very chipper young dwarf named Emmy um, says, oh, yes, uh, shift back here um, and at, at, from the counter and, and kind of brings you around a corner and you find this huge iron um, or steel uh, vault door, which she spins the, the wheel on and opens. And inside you see a good sized room with shelving on the walls and tables uh, on in the, in the middle, mostly which are filled up with weapons of different types and shapes and sizes. Um, the uh, couple odd bits and bobs of other things as well. You're not sure what they are, but um, she kind of leads you in there in Crom. You, you put it down on one of the tables in the middle and it kind of jolts everything around it. And, and then she says, um, anything else you'd like to leave in here? Here is a pamphlet. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, let's be leaving then. Uh, as, as, as she leads you out. Um, 
closes the door back behind and and you all find yourselves congregating once again in the common room of the Slayer's Take. Um, and yeah, you, you have everything you need. You have the basic instructions heading north out of the city. Um, are, are, are we leaving then? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. I'm just going to let them know how that went with the Sphinx, that they were not able to identify oh. where it might be. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. All right. We'll keep, keep trying. Um, so, moving on. Uh, going north out of the city is, is a little tough. Um, you can't go directly north out of the city as the northern part of the city is dominated by Heaven's Stair, the huge mountain rising out of the back of the city. Um, but you are able to find a road kind of to the side and, and out of, of the side of the mountain and out of the city to the north. Um, it's a couple days travel to where you're going. Um, through this kind of cold, not exactly wasteland, but it's definitely frozen in in winter. Um, once again, as you had traveled through before, very few animals out. The few that are uh, tend to be predatory. Um, who would like to keep uh, just just for this first day? Who who would like to keep a general eye out? I'll do it. I, I will. Oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, you do it. No, All right. no, you do it. <laughs> Zippo, you want to do it? Sure. <laughs> All right, go for it. Um, that is a 17. 17, okay. Um, you, over the course of the day, you, you, there's birds flying about. You're miserable because it is very cold. You have three coats on now as, as you were able to find another at the Slayer's Take to put over the two you have. Um, but it's still, it's just cold. I hate to tear. Um, but in some ways that makes you very alert to what's going on all around you. Um, you definitely try to soak up as much sun as you can. It's a bit windy, but not snowing today. And um, it, it's it's fairly clear, so you are able to get some sunlight. And other than the occasional bird um, and the occasional maybe wolf tracks at one point that you see, um, you don't see much. Uh, the same bedding down for the night in your in your dome. Um, it's it it warms up immediately. Uh, and after another long rest overnight, you're able to. Uh, continue on into the mountains. It, it gets harder at, at, on the second day for sure and colder. Um, Krom, you're used to this kind of thing as the, as the tribe you grew up with. Uh, I mean, you, you lived in the mountains and you got used to this cold, harsh environment. Um, so to you, this is like, it, it, it's kind of, it, it, it's kind of like, um, nostalgia almost like you're like oh i grew up and in, in a very similar place and it, it's it reminds you of your childhood and teen years a bit uh, in a good way oh. yeah but yeah digging it what's that I yeah. said digging it yep digging it all right um okay um as on the second day as you're walking through um, you looking over to, as you're headed north, looking over to the west, you notice, you do notice Zippo, um, a bit of a good size column of dark smoke rising from, um, a pair of mountains, um, to the west in the same range that you're in. Um, it, it strike you, it strikes you as interesting and you kind of make a mental note of it um but near the end of the second day 
the sun not quite going down yet, you find your way into a small kind of clearing amongst the pine trees here in, in the mountains. Um, and at the end of this kind of small valley clearing, um, uh, at, on a small rise, you see what could have been from a distance maybe described as a stone gazebo or something like that. Um, here up close, it looks bigger than you might call a gazebo, uh, but that same kind of peaked roof, uh, kind of a, a round shape to it, um, maybe 40 feet across inside um, with six columns, heavy columns holding it up. As you come up to it, you see four figures um, standing around a what looks like a pool of water with a slight a bit of maybe mist or steam rising off of it. Ooh, we found it. Yes, indeed. That's it, you guys. Right there. All right. Walking up, the four figures, um, upon hearing you walk up, immediately turn uh -oh. and, and, and advance towards you. Not threateningly, but um, you see that, that they are in heavy cloaks of this dark green color. Uh, with kind of elven helmets on their heads. Um, on, on the helmet, there is an engraved eye um, in the middle of the forehead. And uh, hands on their swords, they kind of confront you as you come up to the, this, this small step leading up into this, this structure. And one of them steps forward and says, yes, uh, what is your business here? Um... We are here for the tears of Ayun and the Sphinx lady sent us. Oh, Sissa sent you. Yeah, that one. Well, all are welcome here. Uh, okay. Just we, we are the, the guardians uh, of Ayun. There are very few of us in the world, but uh, we do what we can and what we must. Okay. Um, you are free to drink, of course, um, or even to take some of the, the water. Uh, however, uh, what is that sound? I don't know. I don't know. Um, however, uh, submersion is forbidden. Please do not wade in the tears of Ion. Oh. Okay. Um, and be careful. It's, it is precipitous. Um, and as that, that, at that, at that point he steps to the side and the others kind of step to the side, allowing you passage into, uh, this round, uh, open building, um, walking forward, you see this just as round, um, pool about 20 feet across in the middle of the building. Uh, like I said, there's a little bit of either mist or or steam rising up from it but even with the mountain wind kind of blowing through uh, through the columns um, the water is completely still um, there is there are no ripples it is it is flat um, and in fact if it wasn't for just some of the slight shift in light of uh, hitting the sides below the water, it would be hard to know that there was water in here. Getting closer and looking down, you can see the sides to this well um, going down a ways. But eventually, even with the clearness of the water, you cannot see the bottom. It just extends down deep and deeper and deeper until no light um, can reach anymore. You are here at the, the Tears of Ion. All right. Okay, so... I would like to drink some. 
Okay. I'm going to drink some. Yeah. I'm going to watch you guys drink some first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, Roland, uh, as, as you bend down and scoop some up, um, small ripples appear um, from where you scoop it up, but they quickly dissipate and don't seem to spread throughout the rest of the water. In your hand, it feels like cold water, um, although not as cold as the air around you. And in fact, you're not sure how the, this water is not frozen over. Um, do you, are you going to drink it? Oh, yes. Okay. As you drink it, it is, it is slightly salty. Um, I like tears. But it, it refreshing enough feeling. All right. Um, yeah, that's, and that's all. Krom, you said you were also going to drink out of it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, as you reach down, seeing Roland do this, and, and you're like, oh, okay. You reach down and scoop out. It, once again, the ripples kind of go out a little bit from your hand, but they don't seem to go into the rest of the water. And as you bring your hand to uh, 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 bring the water up to your face, you find that you cannot bring your hand out of the water. Oh, no. Uh, it feels like a force of something has clamped down on it. I've made a horrible mistake. Um, look, you remember, and the, some of the nostalgia has brought this back to you, um, in your time with your tribe when you were younger, you remember objects in the mountains and these lakes being so frozen, like logs and things, so frozen in, in all the way through in this water that nothing could move them um, until the spring thaw. And this is what that reminds you of. You suddenly, like, you cannot move your hand out of it. And as you try to pull back, and then release a little bit, it seems to pull you further in. Oh. Um, no? Crom, uh, quit playing around. No, 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 it's for real. Uh, get those guys over there to help. <laughs> hey, guys over there, what's going on? Why is it doing this? Call the guardians. The guardians, gu the, guardians. The, the, the guardians run up um, saying, oh, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're not supposed to go into the water as at this point it's getting near your elbow <laughs> and you're kind of leaning into the water. No, it's pulling me. I didn't do it. I was. Drinking. What are you talking? No, you, it, what are you talking about? And they try to grab onto you and and pull you away. But as they do, the pulling seems to get even faster and stronger. It's now up to your bicep as it, your shoulder is <laughs> about to go into the water. Somebody chop off my arm! Hurry! <laughs> <laughs> um. And as she says this, <laughs> your balance is lost and you fall into the water. Oh no! Goodbye. No waiting. I can't swim that good. <laughs> With a splash. Under the surface of the water. You should be able to breathe. Nice. Oh, that's right, because you, you cast uh, water breathing every morning, don't you? You never know. Right. Even, even in the mountains. Just like, those, just like the flotation devices on planes. You never know when you're going to need them, even in the mountains. Um, in any case, um, sinking below the surface, you still feel now your whole body in being pulled down. And as you look up, the you see the water kind of filtering through um, and it, uh, the light kind of filtering through the water. Um, the faces kind of blurred of people looking down at you, moving around and, and yelling. Um, slowly, the sound of them is just replaced with this kind of the the kind of constant hum of of, of kind of the the not well almost roar of being underwater as you go deeper and deeper the light slowly fades and fades more the rest of you watching down below you see crom swiftly uh fall out of view um eventually into darkness and you can't see her anymore but crom um, it's scary at first. And then, um, um, make a, what's your, what's your constitution score? Uh, 15. 15. Okay. Let me see something. Oh. <gasps> Uh, 
Okay. So as the minutes go by and, and you're, you're sinking lower and lower, eventually no light around and just darkness, you can feel the pressure of the water around you and your ears start to feel uncomfortable from it. Um, it goes on for a while. Um, yeah. Uh, for minutes after minute after minute and eventually you find yourself because you've been holding your breath. Um, right. You find yourself unable to, to, to stop, to, to continue holding your breath and you take a deep breath and find yourself able to breathe. Um, this kind of salty flavor coming into your mouth. And after this moment of panic, you realize, Oh yeah, Sirthis cast that every morning. I was, yeah. and you've never, you've never had to use it um, until yeah. now. <laughs> um, but uh, let me see here. Yes. Okay. As you sink lower and lower and you can feel the pull on you, eventually the pull fades and you feel your feet touch something solid. Looking down, strangely, even in the darkness around you, you can see their, your feet and the ground below. And as you look up, the feeling of water around you suddenly recedes and you are no longer in water. What? And there's, there seems to be light and you can see some kind of gray floor beneath you. Wherever the light is emanating from, you're not sure. And it disperses fairly quickly out around you just into nothingness and silence. Um, what do you want to do? Um, start walking towards a direction that, yep. Okay. Um, so you, you pick a random direction? Uh, yeah, I will go north. All right. As you go to take a step thinking, oh, I'm going to head north with your basically inerrant sense of direction, um, you falter, realizing suddenly you have no idea which way north is. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you are able to take the step and there it is, seems to be no difference in where, where you're seeing. Okay. I just go that way okay heading in the same direction um the floor beneath you is hard like stone um maybe slightly wet as as your steps kind of make a little bit of a splash as you kind of it, almost this echoing sound happening you're not sure what it's echoing off of you walk for several minutes not seeing anything different um although at some point you hear kind of these whispers that come through. You're not sure exactly where from, um, and at turning, you don't see anything. Okay. Huh? Uh, I'll just say, um, hello? Anybody there? I'm looking for the exit. A little bit louder this time, but you can't catch words. You hear the whispers once again. They seem to almost be coming from several different places at once. But you still don't see anything. Huh. Uh. Okay. Does my ring... I'm going to try my ring. Okay. Uh, to see if I can talk to the people up, up top. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who has it. Probably Chomp has one. I'll... Try to call him. Chomp does have one, yes. All right. Um, as you... Let me think about this for a second. Might be too far. Or on another plane. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, as you go to speak into your ring, um, it's, it's, you're not sure how you would know if it was working fine or not, but speaking into it, you wait. And you don't hear anything back. 
those of you above currently are having to deal with some fairly irate guardians um, who are uh, berating you at the same time as trying to uh, interrogate you as to what the hell just happened. Um, and why did your friend jump into the pool? Um, but Krom, yes, getting no response, um, you once again, for a moment, hear even louder this time, Ooh. Those, those, just the whispers all around you. Uh, and kind of turning around and turning around, you finally catch something out of the corner of your eye. And turning to it, you see a figure. A hulking figure. Oh. Probably 20 feet tall. Yeah. As, as, and, and it seems to be wreathed in darkness. Right. Uh, as, it, as it kind of solidifies, you see uh, spreading out of it kind of these skeletal looking what might be wings. It's, as, and as you gather a little bit of perspective, realizing how tall this thing is and how far you might be from it, you're about 20 feet off. And you hear it once again, the whispers out of the corner of you, just, but this time, not just all around you, but specifically in front of you. It seems to be coming from this figure. Okay. Um, hey, um, I'm looking for the exit. Do you know how to get out of here? The figure, the figure, an, an arm seems to kind of stretch out from the figure towards you, kind of beckoning. Okay, I'm going to walk up to it and hold its hand. Okay, walking up, its hand is reaching down to you, but still barely comes just above your head. And as you reach up to its hand, you see its face kind of clears a bit. Um, and you see what you recognize to be Riz. Oh, oh! Um, and as, as you're reaching out and... Uh, Riz reaches down. You see that Riz's hands have shackles around the wrists. Oh shit! With three chains on either shackle. Oh no! Um, holding her to the floor. These huge skeletal wings rising out of her back. Massive shoulders now, um, with kind of bits of of haphazard armor and horns rising out of her head. Uh, her skin seems to be the shifting mass of just darkness. You're not even sure what color it is, but in her eye is just this deep dark that seems to suck in all light around them. And as she looks at you, she says, release me. No, <laughs> you're not my boss. And her hand's still out. She says, release me. No. Strike the chains. <laughs> no. Use the tool. No. Uh, um, wait, what tool? She gestures, she's gesturing towards your sword. Oh, mm -mm, nope. No, no, no. You can't trick me. You are weak. Fuck you. <laughs> you know nothing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I'm not weak, though, but I'm... I don't know much. Um, so, so yeah, um, not going to help you. I'm going to go. You won't help? No, 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 no. Well, no, then sorry. die. Okay. And as she reaches out oh, sure. towards you, um, the, the hands being held back by the shackles, she can't quite reach you. Ah. Where, where you and then suddenly one of the chains creaks. And she's suddenly able to grab your, your, she grabs you by the left arm with her right hand, her, the talons digging in, um, this large hand bigger than your shoulder, um, uh, as they, it, the talons dig in, um, you take, oh, crap. 16 points of necrotic damage. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and she says, um, then die. 
Um, could you please make a saving throw? Sure. You can choose which kind. Um, I, a con save. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a con saving throw. 14. 14. Wait, no, no, sorry. Can I make that strength? Yeah, we'll okay. say we can make it strength, yeah. Yeah, 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 sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 15. 15, okay. <laughs> um, as you as you gather your strength, the, the talons digging into your arm and you try to wrench yourself away, um, you find that the talons dig even deeper in. You can feel one of them touching bone. Oh no! Um, and in trying to wrench yourself away, you take 18 points of necrotic damage. This is the part where I die, you guys. <laughs> Could you make another save? Your choice. Yes. Five. What, what, what kind of save are you making? Strength. Strength? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a nine. A nine. As it w weakened by the pain, are you trying to wrench free still more? Oh! You uh, take... Another 15 points of necrotic damage. Okay. okay. At, at the pain digging into you, realizing that... I'm an idiot? At, at this point, <laughs> you, you don't know how you're going to get away. Could you make another save? Yeah, I'm going to choose wisdom this time. Okay. So I'll probably lose because my wisdom sucks. Oh, fuck. It's a three. I got a three. A three. Okay. Digging in as, as Riz tries to pull on you. Um, instead of trying to pull away this time, you just simply say, no. And you dig your sword down with your right hand into the stone floor or whatever it is beneath you. Yeah. And as you do this, a glow starts around everything around you. More and more of the floor is seen, more and more and more, and you are aware that there, over to your, your right somewhere, there is a figure walking towards you. Uh, seems to be wreathed in white flame. Oh, that's better. Yeah. So, am I still attached? The um, you're still attached, and, and the pain at this point is, is blinding. But as the figure comes closer, you hear a female voice speak, strong and clear, saying, You have no right to this one. Yeah. And as she walks up, she walks up to the demon before you and starts touching each chain. And as she does, the same glow that surrounds her, the same white flame starts to surround the chain as she touches it. And the first one, she says, wisdom that we may remember. The second one, she says, knowledge that we can endure. And then she goes on saying, peace that you may have no hold, hope that we may look to the future. And then she says, faith that we might look beyond ourselves. And finally, and she gestures to you, some strength is needed to uphold what is right and true. And as she says this last one, the white flames going up around the chains and around the shackles that are around Riz's wrists, you hear Riz start to scream in this piercing voice uh, that's louder than anything you've ever heard. And it grows louder and louder before it cuts off with this boom and a shudder of thunder through the floor and you drop to one knee. Your right arm still dug into the floor with, with your sword, your left arm just throbbing with pain. And as you lift your head up, you see that same figure now with the radiance dissipated a bit, um, a simple figure in a simple robe. 
uh, the ends of the fabric, as you look down the robes, seem to unroll into the shape of scrolls that are slowly unfurling, or some of them refurling, rolling back up. As you your gaze travels up, you see a face, a kind-looking face, with strong eyes that are looking at you warmly. Um, her hair is brown, spilling loose down behind her with a little bit of gray at the temples. Um, and as you watch, as you your eyes come up to the face, um, a third eye opens in the middle of her forehead um, in this kind of blue-green color uh, of the iris. And she looks down at you and says, receive my blessing. She reaches out one hand and touches you on the center of the, your forehead with her index finger. And with a jolt, you feel your awareness of everything around you surge. Every touch of the air on your skin and every variation of color is suddenly apparent to you. Um, and you also now have a permanent plus two to your wisdom score. Oh, thank Jesus. Okay. <laughs> that is awesome. Um. The figure with the three eyes looking down at you um, reaches out, grabs the right hand with the sword, and pulls you up to a standing position. Oh, nice. Um, and says, you are wiser than you know, my champion. Go, go forth and teach and protect knowledge. Definitely. And as she turns away, you see her start walking away from her, her radiance kind of fading into the distance. And as she does, you suddenly realize that you've been floating up once more and you feel once again, the salty water all around you, which you've been naturally breathing in, not even realizing it for the last few seconds. And as minutes go by in back into darkness and then eventually seeing light above you, you come back to the surface of the pool of the Tears of Ayun. Breaching the surface, you take your first breath of air, coughing up some of the water that's still in your lungs. Um, it does feel a lot different. Um, you feel calm and looking around, you see the clerics of Ayun, the guardians staring at you. And a couple of them start to kneel um, as you are now kind of levitating above the water. Ooh. Um, looking around at the other faces, you see your friends all also staring, partially in amazement. It's Krom's ghost. And partially <laughs> in horror. Um, and actually, as you follow their gaze, you see they are looking to your left and looking over. Uh -oh. You see where Riz's claws had dug into you, now a stump of smooth flesh Whoa. at the shoulder. Nice. Cool. I mean, ow, but this is awesome. And as you kind of float forward, you land and you feel whole. You can swear you could almost feel your arm there still, although the pain has now mostly gone away. This is the first time you had noticed it was gone. Um, and it's a little bit disorienting. Uh, Krom? Yeah? Is that you? Yeah? I'm better though now. I'm uh, better. Look what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> and I wiggle my thump around. Yeah, that's definitely Krom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yes. Um, the, uh, the, all the four guardians now are, are bowing down towards you. Uh, the rest of your friends kind of gathering around you. Um, yeah, you, you feel like you, you, you have a better understanding of just things now. And looking down in your right hand, holding the sword and feeling the warmth of it, you realize that it also has changed. Ooh. In fact, if you refresh your D&D &D Beyond page, you will see. Um, 
instead of this feeling of kind of heat coming from it, it's just pleasantly warm. And on the the uh, etched and and kind of uh, notched blade um, on the side of it, you see now a face, a round oval face with three eyes etched into it. Um, Ooh. Yeah. That is badass. So it does some pretty cool stuff now. Whoa. And you also feel as if when holding the sword, the uh, the knowing mistress is with you. Whoa. Way better. Way better than that little annoying kid thing. You also are feeling, just think, if, like looking at it, that there is something changed about this, the, this other, other than the stats, of course, that there's... Like, even from when you picked it up, it, it seemed to grow and, and change as the longer you held it and things like that. And now with this large change, um, you, you're not... There, there's something strangely different about this weapon than maybe even other magic, magical weapons, and you're not sure what. In any case, um, I think that might be where we're going to leave it this week. Because I don't have anything else prepared. Yay. Oh, that was awesome. That was intense. Well, that was really great. <laughs> what are you talking about? Always drink the water. No. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> she drank the water and now she only has one arm. Yeah, but who needs two arms? Not me. Everybody. She, yeah. <laughs> what if I have three pieces of pizza? <laughs> She got a she got a legendary item out of it, so I don't know. Oh. It's, it's it's pretty. <laughs> it's worth it. Good stuff. Good. And, uh, stuff. Hey. The, the increased wisdom comes from don't drink from strange water sources. <laughs> well, don't, you know. Don't yeah. take cursed uh, swords from demon heads. That's what I learned. That is a good thing to learn. I try to live by that every day of my life. Yep. Yep. Thank you. That was awesome. Anyway, that was real fun. I enjoyed it. Um, also, Kristen, did you ever like find a job again? Or no, not yet. You're still looking? <laughs> okay, I'm keeping an eye out. Still, there may be something. I mean, I don't know. Are you just looking <laughs> in Milledgeville? Or yeah, but I'm I'm willing to travel or move. We're really not tied to Milledgeville anymore too much. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll I'll keep an eye out. There may be uh, some full time positions opening up at the library if you're interested. Yeah. But, yeah, um, there's benefits, um, and they pay okay. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah, but I'll let you know if it opens up. All right, thanks. Well, thanks, y'all. Have a good day. All right. yeah, I'll see y'all in two weeks. Yeah, yep. thanks. All right. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Good. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>